welcome, Rosalind Kahn. Good afternoon, everybody. This is Rosalind Kahn with Living Your Best Life. Today, I am Chow Entertainment. This afternoon, I have a very distinguished, honored guest with us. This one tops the top of the top. Her name is Denise Valdiva, and she is a woman of achievement queen, one of the kindest souls I've ever met who's on the queen stage. You can tell me about that special honorary title that you got, darling. Please give, take it away. Hi, everybody. Well, thank you for having me, Rosalind. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, woman of achievement. Yes, definitely quite an experience. Platform. I, I won the highest place, second place platform winner in the Women of Achievement Award, which basically is um, given to someone who brings what they've achieved and what they're doing with their achievement and gives the explanation and provides details into their mission and values. So uh, it was quite an honor to win second place as a platform winner. Now, had you ever done anything like this before? No, it was my first time. In fact, I was nominated to be Miss United St States, Miss West Coast two, like three weeks before um, the pageant. So it was quite a quick experience and I had no time to really prepare. So I was really honored to have won second place, having short time. Most women next to me took so much time to prepare themselves. And I just felt really honored that the judges saw um, something in me that was able to win second place. Wow. That just sounds so impressive. You know, when I met you with, with Miss Karen Minfield, she just said, said your story was, was beautiful. What tell to the audience, what is your platform that you're promoting? I know for one thing, you work three jobs and I don't know anybody who can go ahead and work three jobs, but you're up on the mountain one day, you're working another place another day and you're always on the go and how, tell me the platform, baby. Oh, awesome. Well, thank you. Thank you for that. Yeah. So, the you know, lots of jobs, lots of work and so much work to be done. And it, three jobs are really not enough to when you have so much to give and so be grateful for. And so I think that's the motivation in itself. Um, as far as my platform, ACES, Adversity Childhood Experiences. And, you know, in my own life, having um, trauma and how that played a role into my lifespan and the choices I made and the poor choices that I uh, made in going through life and understanding how to overcome those challenges and the resources available, but really first understanding the adverse to childhood experiences um, and promoting that, helping people understand that, helping giving someone justice and being able to provide that um, sense of peace and taking away the stigma and so what what I do for it's what I do for a living and it's been my mission but my mission to help people overcome challenges and struggles that keep them stuck or stagnant in their life and not able to overcome um, and and achieve their highest potential you know they always say that experiences is, is the voice that really helps other people that you've experienced it yourself and you know what you're you're giving off to other people to 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 make it better. And I know even in our conversations, we we, we often talk about the same thing. It's called stress. Yes. And I say how you know the the most stressed out people are people who are therapists. And I said, well, what is it that you do to take take care of yourself? And what could you recommend to our listeners here? Because everybody in our world today is so stressed out. They need you on a full time basis. So what what can you offer them? Well, you know, self-care is truly important. And I was just talking um, to someone dear to my heart today in regards to grounding and being able to ground self and um, being in tune with self. It really takes a challenge because that means you need to spend time with yourself. And, you know, and as a person like me, I'm a, I'm a giver and, and I'm always trying to do something for others. So it was hard to be able to sit, sit down and make time for self. And I think at the platform of that, you got to learn how to love self to be able to, to accomplish that. So what I would tell my fellow colleagues out there would be um, make time for self. Self-care is truly important. Do something that's going to be able to ground you, be able to um, set the stage for your day goals, your achievements. You know, if my day is to at least 
help someone overcome at least one challenge. And if I was able to do more for every person that I came across, great. Um, but that's just my goal, just one person a day. You know, that's a similar goal to the one that I have. If I impact one person's life a day, then I've truly made a difference. And I can also comment to that, you know, really take time for yourself. It's many people call me crazy, but you know, I find that hour, if I get up just that a little bit earlier, I know Joe boy gets up a little bit earlier, working on Anna Marie, getting her up a little bit earlier, but you've got to have time for yourself because when you make time for you, the curveballs can be thrown and you just take a back seat and just breathe. They're, they're so absolutely amazing. They're so absolutely amazing. And you do so many things. If someone wanted to follow up with you and get a hold of you, what would be the way that you could go ahead and they could reach out to you? Um, for me, the, I have a social media where anybody who needed to reach out, they could find me through social media. Um, it's Denise Valdivia. I make it very simple, so it's easy to easy to find. Um, but I, I have several platforms, and in, in being able to find me in social media, I have Instagram, I have um, Facebook. Those are my two main ones, and I just get, you know I, I'm pretty much connected to oh and Messenger. So I'm, I'm connected to everyone and um, in, in social media for sure. Fantastic. And what's the next thing, big thing that you're working on that people can look for you at? Um, the next best thing I'm working on. Um, right now I'm working on really North uh, San Diego County, working with women and children, being able to help women and children recover from substance use, gain lasting recovery from substance use and mental health. So right now I'm working on co-occurring disorders, being helping women find treatment, get into treatment, and then housing their place, you know, a place that they're continuing their next level of care. So right now I'm working with the county and being able to get grants and um, helping women furnish their their place wherever they go to setting up because some people really do find the challenge after treatment. So what happens after treatment? And I think that's my goal right now. I've been able to overcome the steps into getting into treatment, overcome treatment, but then what happens after treatment? And so I'm working on the next step. You know, there's a wonderful lady who was on my show and I went down to visit her place in San Diego. Her name is Lady Blingy. She lives in an art center that's in downtown San Diego. And she showed us when we looked out the back window they have a place where everybody comes and donates items and qualities, everything that you need to set up a home. And I'd highly suggest that you reach out to her because they might just have that bed, that window, and that chair that could be just what you're looking for. Have you heard Absolutely. of that place? No, I have not. But that's a great resource. Absolutely. You got you to gotta share that with me. No, definitely. Well, that's what I'm all about. It's about connecting people. And she has the kindest and most beautiful heart. And we've got to run now because I've got a few things going on. But I just wanted to thank you so much for coming out and, and sharing with me. I want to say one last thing. When I introduced you on the show, and I want to say this from the bottom of my heart, we see a lot of people who have the title of queen. We see a lot of people who go ahead and wear the crown. But you are the one person that I know that, that lives that title in and in. And to me... That means the most. And I want to say from my heart, gratitude beyond words for being this special, unique individual that you are. My name is Rosalind Khan. This is called Living Your Best Life with Rosalind Khan on Chow Entertainment. You can follow me on all social media. Just look for the name Rosalind Khan. And as an honor to you, if you want to get a book, it's called Random Acts of Kindness. Just look it up on my webpage, rosalindkhan.com, and that gift will be yours. Gratitude beyond words. Thank you so much, Denise, and have a great day. Thank you for your interest in In Flight USA and our newest publication, BizAvJets USA. We serve general and business aviation throughout the U.S. For more information on submitting articles or advertising in our publications, visit InFlightUSA.com. Thank you. BizAvJets USA magazine is a new publication to the business aviation industry. And business aviation is a growing and thriving industry. We plan to bring you all the latest trends and news. We also plan to bring you new information about new airframes, systems, and interiors to market. 
feel free to visit bizavjetsusa.com. Good morning. Welcome to Living Your Best Life with Rosalind Khan. Today we have a very special, special guest. I'd like to introduce you to Mike Trudell from Orbic Helicopters. Thank you. You're not being recertified. You know, uh, you, you just can't. You just can't fly unless you pass a review. Right. So right, right. the FAA is very, very careful not to call it a recertification. Other countries in the world, they they do call it recertification. Right. Where your license actually expires. Well, your license doesn't expire in the U.S. It never does. You know, it's just that if you want to go ahead and continue to fly, though. You, know, you have to get a review and be signed off by an instructor. So it's, exactly. it's somewhat, somewhat informal. Yeah, because I know my husband has to go do that every right. once in a while or right. every six months or whatever. He's yep. got a you know, schedule a meeting where the two of them go up and they yep. do the process and show yep. that he knows what's going on and exactly. what's happening. Exactly. And it's uh, it's not pass-fail. It's just it's more like pass no pass, you know. It's, right. It's kind of an interesting uh, way it's done, uh, but you know, you have to get it. You know, you have to get it done, of course. And uh, uh, but you know, let's let's say if somebody adds a rating, okay, mm -hmm. like you're an airplane pilot and they want to add a gyro rating, a helicopter rating, a glider rating, you know, a multi-engine rating, a seaplane rating, then you get to uh, you don't need to do the review because that new rating counts as a review, which is kind of nice. That's so, cool. Yeah. That's good. So, but gyros, because they're anything that's got a rotor blade on it, it's it's a different uh, it's a it's a different process. It's a, a different way of understanding how aircraft fly, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, in some ways it does take uh, you, you you just can't make any assumptions on right. uh, on uh, what makes it fly. So you know they handle very very similar. You know when you're straight in a little flight because they do even a helicopter. You know first hour I can take any you know airplane pilot and they can do straight and low flight turns climbs and descents in a helicopter you know pretty much unassisted right after the first flight but it takes a long time to uh, fill in all those other things that take off landing and helicopters hovering and gyros it's uh, simpler because gyro can't hover right okay. so if the gyro can't hover uh, then uh, 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 but the right now as it is right now with uh, the rotor blade stationary it can't fly until right. it has until the blades spin right so that's the trick and uh so right now as these things sit right these things are largely overpowered uh tricycles oh wow so you know they, they won't fly at all until you get rotor rpm and you have to have enough rotor rpm in order to go ahead and fly right so we like to say here that uh, you need rotor rpm to fly and then you need to build airspeed after liftoff to climb and you always need to keep the gyro on a 1g environment which means that uh, you know you're not <coughs> horsing around with the gyro uh, getting into uh, low g in order to go ahead and live <laughs> right so, of course of course okay. of course so, and what country do they originally come from well this particular model originates in italy okay but uh the uh the other uh, manufacturers uh, like for example auto gyro is based in uh, germany oh okay. wow uh, the auto gyro is actually an older uh, design compared to a helicopter. It's been around uh, almost 20 years uh, before the helicopter was perfected. Right. And uh, the purpose of uh, the uh, uh, of the auto gyro uh, back in uh, 1923 was not to try to solve mysteries of uh, helicopters. It was really to make it essentially a stall-proof airplane. Oh wow! You know that was really the the point of the thing. And uh, but its invention gathered the notice of helicopter people and they started looking at the auto gyro as an evolutionary step. So when the helicopter finally did get perfected in the uh, you know, late 30s and early 40s, mostly in the 40s, uh, then the interest in the auto gyro pretty much disappeared, except for the 50s it was resurrected again by Igor Benson that kind of born the sport gyroplane configuration involving a pusher propeller and a short coupled tail. Uh, but, you know, they suffer from inherent stability issues, uh, which, uh, you know, if you're a test pilot, you kind of understand that. But if you're, you know, weekend flyer, it had a terrible accident history. So, right. so, the, uh, uh, so the Italians, uh, who also were uh, 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 very, very uh, aware of this uh, aspect, took the existing old Benson designs from the 50s and essentially refined them with a, you know, with a nice stabilizing surface in the tail and right. kind of, you know, made it really, really pretty with the, uh, with the proper enclosures and all that uh, mm -hmm. on the, on the fuselage. 
and uh, turned the thing into a nice cruiser. So. No, it looks it looks very nice. So. And how often do you get these up and get them out there? Um, well, I'm I'm flying these things at least once a week. Uh, oftentimes, I'm flying them a couple. Uh, two or three times a week, but I have to balance that with uh, my uh, my normal corporate uh, aviation job. Okay, and is that for the training that, that you do? No, well, it's half is training, half is personal. Oh, that's I mean, wonderful. I'll take it, I'll take it out. You know, cause, uh, cause and like just, you take your old favorite car out, you take your gyro out and just yeah, go for a exactly. spin. Yeah, that's exactly. That's wonderful. So, the, uh, let's go ahead and take a look over here. Okay. mother he had Alzheimer's and I remember we were all in the hospital room and for like 10 seconds she recognized who we were and then it was gone so it's like a thief he's taking away memories and, um, who you are as a person over five and a half million Americans have Alzheimer's that number may double by 2050 for more information visit rightfocus.org Senior Care Authority is a one-stop solution for helping you locate senior living options we understand the care, the costs, and the safety records of hundreds of communities, from assisted living and memory care to independent living and even skilled nursing. We help families cut through the complexity to make courageous, informed decisions under difficult circumstances. So the M16, this model has been around uh, actually since uh, uh, the uh, mid to late 90s. Uh, so it's uh, it's actually a very, very uh, refined design. It's also the long, longest running design that uh, Magni has produced. So uh, they've uh, they've sold tons and tons of these things. Right. So, but of course the market was always asking about, hey, we need to get a side-by-side -side enclosed model. And right. They messed around with this one for development for you know for a while in order to go ahead and uh, get the machine to uh, uh, to perform you know uh, uh, correctly and so in 2005 that was introduced so, Wow so but wow. this is the motorcycle of the year okay so so this is the sporty one it's a little bit faster uh, they fly very very similar uh, so but uh, this is the sporty one when you sit in the front you know, you got this great big windshield over here. Right. It's covered with bugs right now, but because uh, I just flew it back from, uh, from Santa Maria a couple of years ago. Oh, okay. And um, uh, so I had had time to clean it. But uh, uh, but when you're sitting here, this big windshield basically blocks all the wind or something like that. You're sitting right. there. It's it's very very comfortable. We have uh, you know we have refined helmets with an intercom, so we can talk back and forth. Wonderful. And, and Wonderful. Uh, you know it uh, the the, the uh, communications if. You ever been in most open cockpit airplanes? Uh, sometimes the communications are very, very sketchy, right. very dicey because there's a lot of wind noise and oh, what, what, what did you say? Exactly. And, you know, but you know, we 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 spent a lot of time uh, getting the communications right on this machine. So, and uh, of course, you know, it's it's got everything we need to go ahead and fly in all the airspace. It flies uh, into you know LA all the time. Mm -hmm. So it's uh, got. Uh, you know, Mosey transponder and ADSB in and out, so I can get my right. traffic and I can go and fly pretty much anywhere I want. You know, so um, I've, I'm a commercial gyroplane rated pilot, so uh, I'm, I'm not restricted to like a sport pilot. But uh, you yeah, know, a sport pilot doesn't have much of the restrictions either. You know, and, right? Uh, the sport pilot really the only meaningful restriction that they have if they're if they already have a, 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 a they already a private pilot, you know, in an airplane or something like that. Uh, the only real restrictions they have is no flying at night. Right, right, right. So, but uh, if they're just purely a sport pilot, you know, they started as a sport pilot, they don't have a private pilot license or anything else. Okay, well, now you have to have additional uh, additional uh, training and authorizations to go and fly into airspace that communicates right. with air traffic control. Okay. Hey, are you looking to get blinged out? Well, look no further. Boss Lady Bling Blingy have all the bling you need. You can find us online at Lady Blingy 4 on IG or Lady Blingy on Facebook or www.BossLadyBlingBlingy here in sunny San Diego at 2031 Commercial Street, San Diego, California. Call us at 619-617-4586. Over 40 years, Bay House Central Florida has provided education, independent life skills, and job training to thousands of Central Floridians who live with blindness or any degree of vision loss. Whether it's picking out clothes in the morning or just moving around your community and serving Orange, Seminole, and Osceola counties, contact White House Central Florida at 407 898 2483 or visit them online at lighthousecfl.org.
So, on the uh, on the M24, the seats are arranged in a side-by-side -side staggered uh, configuration. So the passenger who sits in the right seat is actually a little further back. So there's uh, uh, so it you know you're not touching shoulders to each other. So it's you oh, know it good. actually is a little bit of a trick to get a little more room. Oh wow! So, you know, so by broadening the uh, and, and still not making the fuselage so fat that uh, you uh, you wind up suffering performance. So. But uh, this one's kind of uh, is 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 uh, average equipped, you know. So I, I didn't go out of my way to you know make it super top of the line deluxe. This one's this one's much more deluxe. Right. You know, this one's a little bit more basic. Right. So, when you uh, say you know someone who doesn't fly planes, when you say this is deluxe and this one's basic, what does this one have that that one doesn't? Have? Well, I mean, I have um, uh, we we have essentially the same equipment. Uh, I think uh, the uh, the equipment that we have over here, mm -hmm. there's. Uh, it is essentially the same equipment, and uh, but there because the panel space is a little bit bigger, you can actually put in integrated flight uh, displays where you really can't do an integrated flight display right, right. very well in this one. Right. I also, you know, uh, the, the extra things that I spent were for the rear seat because me being the instructor, I want to have controls and stuff in the back. Of course. Uh, whereas, of course. like the stock doesn't have anything, so right. I, I I added that stuff because being an instructor. No, no, that's awesome. So it's awesome. But uh, uh, so there's, you know, there's an integrated uh, uh, display panel option. Of course, you can get from, uh, you know, from the manufacturer uh, right. as an option. But you know, so you know, for me, you know, a gyro is uh, you know, it's about simplicity. And uh, you know, I, I just try to uh, approach it that way all the time. Where it's like, uh, yeah, we we want to have, you know. An, complex life and everything like that way we kind of want to have some simple pleasures right exactly exactly that's awesome that's awesome but uh it's all pretty fair and everything like that you know the, the amount of uh you know uh fairing and coverings on it really uh do you know make the thing look very very sharp so, so this is probably the one you want to get the ride in yeah that one okay that cool so okay okay so let me see how much fuel is in it so turn around and uh, put, uh, sit down here. I'm going to help with round part there you go. okay so good. and uh, so we'll you just kind of tighten those up a little bit so they're you know snug so, okay. same thing on the other side just raise that part a little bit pull so it's snug okay. there you go good we'll just put them there okay great perfect so uh, we'll make sure this uh, watch hold on that so it doesn't uh, so it doesn't flap out the breeze when I close the door so the door handle here is this one here. Okay. So you, you, when I close it, that handle is going to move forward. Okay. okay. So I'm going to go ahead and show you how to do that. All right. So that's closed. Nurse Access Staffing is seeking experienced RN and LVNs. For more information, call us at 818-697-4484 or check us out on our website, nurseaccessstaffing.com. We are here with Nadia and she's going to tell us about what they are doing here at this Ukrainian church and how they're helping their fellow brothers and sisters back in the islands. Uh, hi, my name's Nadia. I've been a member here at St. Vladimir's Orthodox Church uh, my entire life, basically. Grew up in LA, and right now what we're doing is we're focusing on 
uh, our Vereniki fundraiser. So Vereniki are a very traditional Ukrainian dish. Um, they're, they're dumplings, they're our version of dumplings. Every culture has a dumpling and we have ours, you know. You'll hear them be called a lot of different names actually. Um, some Ukrainians even call them perehe. Non-Ukrainians might call them pierogies. They're very similar to like Polish pierogies, but our version is Vereniki. So what we're doing here is we're uh, getting volunteers that anybody who wants to help us make them can come and make. And anybody that wants to sell them, we're, we're selling two different kinds here. What are the varieties that you're selling? So we're selling a uh, potato and cheese, and then we're also selling sauerkraut, and we also have vegan options for both of those. Oh, wow. Yeah, very inclusive here. You know, we, we hear a lot of stuff in the news of what's in the news and what's not in the news. If there's a perspective that you could tell us that's not being covered, what would you say that story would be that most people don't know and probably haven't heard? In a way, the saddest part about this is this is something that Ukrainians have known for a long time about this Russian aggression, and now the entire world is seeing it. So we're happy that people are seeing it, but at the same time, it's always been there and, and we've known, but it's, it's sad that it's us, but we're glad now that it's, mm, the awareness is really growing. And are you sending any foods or it's just these, these products right here? So what right, right now, our main focus is actually medical equipment and medical supplies. So what you see here is mostly the product of um, people donating materials like these gauze pads or band-aids or um, sanitizing um, liquids. I don't know the words very well, but basically bringing that all together, putting it together in a kit and then shipping it out to them. That's like our main goal. Our secondary goal right here is clothing donations, but that's not nearly enough as important as saving somebody's life. No, that's, that's definitely, definitely for sure. What's, what's the address here if people wanted to come down and make a donation? Where, where would they go to? That's a really good question. I would have to actually Google the address, but if you Google St. Vladimir's uh, Ukrainian Orthodox Church in Los Angeles, this place should come up. Yeah, it's on, it's on Melrose, just west on of Melrose Ver Avenue, yeah. Fantastic. Well, again, my name is Rosalind Khan. I'm with Chow Entertainment. It breaks my heart to be here today and hear your stories. And I just hope your friends, family, and anyone who hears this will have a heart and compassion to want to help you out. Thank you so much. Thank you, Russell.